Well, the men are coming up next. Here are the overall standings after one event. It was Mateusz Kieliszkowski with the event win in the Wheel of Pain. He picks up 10 points. Trey Mitchell was the last man to go, and he wound up finishing second. And Mitchell Hooper continuing his amazing early part of his career here. He currently sits in third place. The men facing the Austrian Oak. 430 pounds, 90 seconds to lift that thing as many times as you can. Each athlete will get one attempt, and then if they cannot get a successful lift at 430, they will move on to the lighter, and I'm going to put that in quotes, log at 385 pounds. Your keys to success are presented by Beyond the Whiteboard. Laws, what are you looking for here? Oh, this is, you know, this is such a classic event. This is the event that Zadrunas Aviskas really stapled his career on. The first man to, to, to do this event and press it overhead for multiple reps. But it's, it's changed weights over the, the last few years. And 195 kilos or 430 pounds has been the established weight. Jerry Pritchett has done this before. The most reps we've ever seen on this particular log with this weight is three by Hafthor Bjornsson. A number of our athletes have done two. I'm expecting two reps to score huge points today. If anyone can hit three or more, this place is going to go ballistic. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's such a huge log compared to what we're normally used to. You know, as soon as you pull it in a lap, it's like, oh, man, this is different, you know? And it took me a couple of years to honestly get up on this thing, and, and finally to double it was, was a huge accomplishment. So, yeah, you're right. If somebody gets past three reps, this is going to be We do have insane. some extremely strong log presses, though. The likes of Luke Stoltman, Trey Mitchell, Bobby Thompson, and even Kieliszkowski has won this event before at the Arnold. So who knows who's going to take the win? Opening day of the 2023 Arnold Strongman Classic. We are glad that you are with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Lawrence Chalet, Jerry Pritchett, and Kiki Dixon is the fourth member of our broadcast team. We'll be checking in with her uh, throughout this event, but we talked about it at the top of the day. The men's competition is wide open. Top two from last year are not back, and right now Mateusz Kieliszkowski in the lead. Plenty of action to go, though, but he's looking to win for the first time in his career. Yeah, we've seen him come second before. And I think he's just excited the strongman fans taking the win on the first event. He's shown he is back. He is here to battle. This is an event he has won before. He's an exceptional log lifter. Very good at one motioning and, and being quick with the log. Not sure he needs to be too fast with the weight that we're going to see. The big question is how is the tricep holding up? He's had tricep surgery since that performance. Um, if his tricep holds up and he's back to his best, could be another very good uh, event for him and a great day one. Absolutely. Yeah, we know what he's done in the past. He's, he's, we know he's been more than capable of doing this. There's been a couple of injuries since then. I, I, I think he's, he's healed up. He's taken time to you know, get back to 100%. So I, I expect a good lift out of him. Well, a man who is very good at log lifting, Bobby Thompson, will be up first. And this is by far his most favorite event. Yeah, last year, Bobby Thompson and Luke Stockman had a great battle on the log for Max. And Luke just took the win on that one. But they are probably our two biggest log lifters in terms of one rep maxes. Oh, this is a little bit different. And Bobby's in a, in a position he won't want to be in. He's having to go out first, so he's got to be the pacemaker. He's had the least amount of rest from the, the Wheel of Pain. He knows he's a great log lifter, but knowing those big guys are coming after is always tough. Yeah. And he needs all the points he can get, so he has to give it everything he has right here because he has no idea what the other guys are going to do. Well, I'm going to put you on the spot, Jerry. How many reps is going to win today on this? I think four. Four. Wow, that would be <laughs> I think so three. good to see. I'm going to say three. With as good as a log presser, a couple of them we have here with Bobby and Luke. And that's a great lift there by Bobby Thompson. And I, I've said three, but I hope I'm wrong. I want to see four yeah. or five. <laughs> I think just I mean, Bobby and Luke and Trey, they're, they're, they're so great at the log. I, I, mean, I see those guys pushing each other. Too. They're all strong in the upper body as well. Yeah. We talk, talk about how strong, you know, some people are with their legs. Well, I don't know Bobby's if he was not I, given that rep yeah, there. Did not have it locked out long enough. And now you talk about just the wasted effort on a bad rep and, and how that piles up. It's a huge wasted effort because it's not like in some comps where you're looking at a 300-pound log. This is 430 pounds. You know, we talk about two reps being good points. He's had to do three just to get two reps. 
That's the thing as a competitor, you cannot afford to make mistakes. He still has 30 seconds to go here, but... This know. is where the fatigue has come in from the wheel. You know, the legs are cashed, the shoulders are hurting. Two reps, can he get a third? Three will be good points. And Thompson's it. gonna get it. And you know what? It could have been four. It could have been four right been there. Four. Been four. He didn't get given the second rep. And that's why I was saying four, because I know these guys are these this is a rep range for these guys because they're such great pressers. They close up they press up to close to five hundred pounds. So this is a rep range for them. Crazy to think, you know, athletes can get four or five reps on. 430 pounds. Three good lifts for Bobby Thompson, and he was just a fraction of a second away from having four. And that is equaling the most we've seen with this particular weight. Yep. I know Zadrunas Aviscus has done four, but with the, the 190 kilos, four, 430 pounds, Bobby Thompson has equaled the best we've seen. Bobby Thompson with a great effort to start things off here. Three successful lifts, and now it's gonna be Rob Kearney coming up next, another guy who's very proficient in log pressing. Yeah, well, Bobby took the American record off Rob. Rob was an exceptional log lifter. He used to use a more of a, an Olympic-style jerk technique. Tore his tricep, and since then, he's had to relearn how to push press. And he says that right now, it's just about coming back to his best. So hopefully, he's feeling good and we can see a big performance from Rob on this one. There's Rob at his best, he'll, he'll handle two, three, four reps of this. Rob Kearney, who you know, last year at this event got himself off to a great start. He was the overall leader after day number one. And went on to finish fifth overall. He's going to try to best Bobby Thompson's mark of three good lifts at 430 pounds, about 195 kilos. I think we all know the likes of Bobby Thompson and Luke Stoltman are probably the, the two favorites when it comes to this. The real battle, I think, is going to come down to Trey Mitchell and Kiliuszkowski. Whoever can kind of come out on top of those two, it's going to leave us in an interesting position for the remainder of this contest. Well, they both have the opportunity to set themselves up for a really good position going in tomorrow, which Mateus needs it going in the deadlift because traditionally not a great lift for him. So he has to have as many points as he can. Yeah. We've seen him in the past win multiple events at the Arnolds and lose out because of that deadlift. Yeah. Rob Kearney, second man up on the Austrian Oak. First attempt here for Kearney. Can he lock it out? Did he get that? I don't know if they gave him credit for that. It did not look like he had his head through Still and that forward. completely overhead. It's so hard when you, you come back from a serious injury. A thumb there, he was given the yeah, rep. He, he was given the rep. So it was blocked out enough overhead for Kearney to get credit for it. He had great drive off his chest. You could just tell like the triceps are yes. a little bit behind on that lockout power. He's one of those athletes that, you know, in his prime on the lock, it was all about that leg power. Now, that was a better lift. And there it is for Rob right. Kearney. That's two. Much better than the first attempt. And 30 seconds to tie. And now suddenly three reps seems possible. Yeah. Bobby Thompson at three reps. You know, that, the log is so big, and, and just missing the timing and that handle rolling forward just a hair can, can affect the lockout so much. Kearney getting the crowd behind him. 14 seconds left. This will be his last attempt. Good clean again. Right there, big drive. Uh -huh. and not going to get it, but two good reps for Rob Kearney. And I'll tell you what, after watching that first rep, to come back and get a good, clean second rep, that impressed me. Yeah, really great effort to come back and, and, and hit the second one better. Yeah. 
Well, let's take another look at Rob Kearney in that the first lift he did get credit for, but like you mentioned, the second one looked a lot better. I'll tell you what, I think Jerry is going to be right about four reps being doable. And I hope he's right. There's so many of these guys are such great log pressers. This is a good, this is a rep range for them. Luke's looked phenomenal in training. Bobby Thompson already put in four reps. Well, he did four reps, yeah. He credited for three. Trey Mitchell is a fantastic log lifter. Let's send it down to Kiki Dixon, who is with Rob Kearney. You had two successful lifts out there. Is that what you were going for? Yeah, the goal was at least two. And honestly, I tore my tricep two and a half years ago. So this event used to be one of my best. Coming back, it's been always in the back of my mind about that injury. But to come out here, hit two reps on this log today, huge win for me to end day one. I'm psyched. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Rob Kearney currently in second place with two good lifts as Kevin Ferris will be up next. This will be a huge lift for Kevin if he gets this. He gives up a lot of body weight to these guys. He's extremely strong, and, and I've seen him hit close to this in competition before. But th this will be a huge lift if he can hit at least one rep here and be great points. For a guy that just got thrown in here last week as an alternate. Oh, yeah. The Arnold is not a show you want to be kind of turning up underprepared for. Not at all. It's funny to think of a guy who is six foot two and 286 pounds is small. <laughs> and welcome to Strongman. In the land of Strongman, yeah, it's, it's small. Yeah, if your body weight starts with two, you're small. <laughs> <laughs> Here goes Kevin Ferris on his first lift. So Kevin Ferris, 430 pounds. Can he get it up to the shoulders? It was close. Is it, you've never done this log before. When you first lap it, it is so much different than any other log you've touched. It throws you off, really. So that to go to, to, to clean it, you're almost confused. Like, what do I do with it now? Because it, it, it's so big and cumbersome. It's nine foot long. There's giant ends on it. You see what he pulled it up the first time, how it, it, the handles flip back on him, they flatten back out. Can't quite get it there. And that's it, it's the, and I think the best thing for him to do is save the energy save now. now. They really got to have those handles pointed to the ground. That way the timing's right when you come up for that clean to roll it to the chest. So Kevin Ferris will try to save up some energy for his attempt at 385 pounds once all the other men are done here. And he's a guy, because his muscle endurance, could, could push a, a good amount of reps on the 385. Mm -hmm. So he's smart to save his energy, go back, just wait, go out fresh for that 385. Well, so far, three men have gone. Two men have been able to lift that 430 pound implement. Rob Kearney got two lifts, and it's Bobby Thompson who was able to complete three lifts and was very close to having four. One more look at his effort that has him on top of the standings for this event right now. Bobby loves the log press, one of his favorite events. Extremely strong at it, obviously. And he showed that here. What does he do better than other people in this event? It's not that he does anything better. He's just very, very good at log lifting. And you'll find there's certain athletes, when they get good at something, they want to train it more often. They don't want to train the things they're not so good at. Leverage makes a big difference. But Bobby is strong in the shoulders. He's strong in the triceps. Very similar to Andrew, who we saw earlier. Very similar to Luke Stoltman, who we'll see coming up shortly. You often find... Athletes are naturally better built for certain events. You know, someone like Pavlo Nekonechny, much longer in the arms. The log, although he's not bad at it, is a weaker event because those arms are longer on the log. He has to travel further. 
It's all about just making yourself as good and well-rounded as possible. Tom Evans will be the next man out. Strength coach at the University of Delaware. This is his first time on a big stage like this. You know, so we haven't seen what he can do on, on some of these implements. Yeah, I've seen him on the kind of amateur circuit. He did exceptionally well last year. He won the amateur Arnolds last year. He won the Shaw Classic amateurs last year. And now he is stepping up to the, the big leagues and holding his own very, very well. This will be a big lift. This is all about experience for, for Tom Evans this year. You know, he's, he's an athlete on the, the up. He's not quite there in terms of challenging to win these titles yet, but he's so new to it, he's improving rapidly and gaining experience in every major show that he does. There's no pressure for an athlete like this. He's not expected to win, so he can come in, he can enjoy it, he can give 100% on every event. And, you know, not having that pressure is a nice position to be in. When you're one of the athletes that people are expecting you to win all the time, it's a different type of contest. There's a different type of pressure to cope with. And he'll get to that. Yeah. But this year, it's all about experience. Come here and aim for some PBs. It's able to clean it pretty easily and just can't get the press. You're not allowed to touch your head as well. So even if that kind of went up, you can't put it on your head and then press up again has to go from the shoulders to a locked out position. John Paul ruined that for yes. years ago and he put that away. <laughs> yeah, we saw some of the oldest strong men. They would try and put it on their head first, stop, and then... Yeah, whatever gives again. you a little bit of a rest, man. Well, and years ago when Locke first came in, they were allowed it because they didn't know, you yeah. know, now it was more technical. Safety reasons as well. Yeah. <laughs> and Evans will wow, get that. Look how that, what that means to him. Wow. A huge lift for Tom Evans. That's big. Absolutely massive lift there. It's going to be great points. And he's happy. Yeah, he's happy to have one. One's great yeah. point. I'll tell you what, dude, that's a stacked lineup of log lifters that we've got oh, today. Yeah. So one good lift for Tom Evans. And we still have quite a few athletes to go here, but given how difficult this implement is, that's going to serve him very well. Very oh. well. And just so cool to see someone so happy. I love seeing the emotion. Yeah. And to come back from a, mi a miss, a bad, have a bad yeah. miss too. And you love to see the reaction there. To hit it that well, second attempt. From a guy who's clearly happy to be here, making his first appearance at the Arnold and has his moment there on the stage with the Austrian Oak. Let's go to Kiki Dixon, check in with her. She's got something on Luke Stoltman, Kiki. Luke Stoltman is a force to be reckoned with, with anything that comes along with the log. I spoke with him and I said, hey, what's the game plan here? He goes, you know what? Well, there is no game plan. I just kind of go out, feel it, feel the whole situation out. He does play to the crowd and he feeds off the crowd, I should say. And he said the good news is he can finally feel his legs again after the wheel of pain. So that's helpful. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably something you don't want to take for granted if you cannot yeah. feel your legs after something. But make sure you... I'll tell you what, Luke is an incredible log lifter. I love watching him lift. He's probably got the most efficient clean out of any of the athletes. And just he's rock solid in the press as well. He's certainly in contention to be seen as one of the best log lifters of all time. Yeah. Just three men have been able to lift that 430 pound log. We just saw Tom Evans get that one successful lift. At Bobby Thompson, still your leader with so, three. Are we going to see four this time? I, I think this is our guy for four. You know what? You've convinced me. Let's see it. Then Trey has to come out and match it or beat it. Yeah. Here comes Luke Stoltman, the Highland Oak. I talked to him earlier. I told him, I said, you know you're in a great position because you could potentially win log. If you have a decent push on that wheel. And he's in a good spot right now to yeah. come in tomorrow with a good good point. And he needs it because the deadlift is probably a, an event where he'll, it'll cost him a few points. He'll lose a little bit. But everything else is looking very solid for Luke right now. And this is an event he can win. Winner of the log last year at the Arnolds. That was for one rep for Max. This is the Austrian Oak. 430 pounds for repetitions, 195 kilos. And I think this is one of the lifts laws that he, he prides himself in. 
dominating. You do see that as well with athletes. They become good at an event, and then it is important to them that yeah. they win that one. Did you feel pressure when you go out to deadlift? To oh, deadlift yeah. to like Especially that? after it yeah. became a thing, too. Right. Like losses, it becomes like pressure on you. Like, oh, they look at you to, to dominate. Yeah, everyone's that. expecting you yeah. to do it then. Look how efficient this clean is. So easy for him. How are those legs feeling? That's the only we'll question. the legs, maybe. Wow. So Luca's got to dump it. And he's just feeling a little bit dizzy there. Take a second. We've seen Luke manhandle these type of weights before. This is a big surprise for me. Oh, yeah. Luke just cannot get that pressed. And you know what? Maybe it is just the fact that the Wheel of Pain has taken too much out of him. Kiki was just mentioning it there. Last year, we saw Luke Stoltman smash much more than this overhead for, yeah. for a max weight. It's not a lot of time if you're completely gassed from that event to recover for a, you know, a top effort log like this. 30 oh, seconds drive. now for Luke. Come on, Luke. Come on, look it up. Cannot get it locked out. There was a video of him training just last week doing 195. No problem at yeah. all. But it's his competition. Uh, this is well in his rep range. More than Kayla, he's done many, many times. He's a contender for a world record lift. Oh, his, his best. This will be his last attempt. He's inside 10 seconds. This now the energy level is just going to be draining. He's cleaned that log a number of times already. Yeah. Well, Luke Stoltman. Oh, Leg, legs are cashed, the hips, the back, everything. Not able to get a successful lift there. And it looked like after that initial clean, he was well on his way towards scoring the some reps The first clean here, was so good, yeah. but then you could see that he just he shook his, on that first dip. He backed up and shook his head like he got lightheaded or something, which it can't happen. You know, you yeah. roll that big heavy log up on your chest. I've had training sessions where you, you, you do an overhead event and so suddenly you just get that, that blood pressure builds up and you get, get a little lightheaded. But with the wheel of pain taking the power out of the legs as well, we'll have to talk to him to find out exactly what's up. But that would be my guess. Energy just spent from that earlier event. Big surprise there. Luke Stoltman was a heavy favorite for that event. Yeah, that's a big, big surprise. But it just goes to show how challenging that wheel of pain is and what it takes out of you. Well, Luke Stoltman unable to get a rep, but Tom Evans was, and he is with Kiki Dixon. You got one rep in the bag, but you fought hard for that rep. What was it like out there? Uh, the energy was unreal. Um, I got really nervous after that first rep because I felt confident I could at least get one today. Um, jacked my technique up, technique up a little bit. I didn't hit it clean, but um, it's actually my first day ever using a wooden log, so I'll take that. Um, really excited to hit such an iconic implement here at the Arnold. And what were the biggest surprises with the wooden log? The clean was like fast, like it hit me right in the chin. I had to like catch myself both times. So the clean wasn't an issue. Um, other than that, it, I mean, that thing's massive. You can feel the weight on the outside, but super excited to get one rep in the tank there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Tom Stoltman will be the next man out. Tom Stoltman, two-time World's Strongest Man. He's an athlete that has managed to deliver at the World's Strongest Man stage. That's when he seems to turn up at his best. If he wants to go down as one of the greatest, he needs to turn up at shows like the Arnold and the Rogue and win all the major titles. That's what he wants to do. Let's see what kind of shape he's in. In the scheme of this competition, how big of an event is this for him? Huge. He, he's a good log lifter. Like, people underrate him on the log. He talk, he, he's, he's more capable simple. of one, two reps. Yeah, he's more than capable of. Oh. Again, looked very solid at the first phase. The clean was strong. I wouldn't expect him to challenge the likes of Bobby, but I do expect him to be able to get a rep. And, and he get it. And he does. Tom will have that. And that's big. He needed that rep. That's big points for him. Points. He's going to use the time wisely. Use up the time. Take all the rest you can. Get one more. That way he doesn't have to share points with, it, with Evans. 
Yeah, if he can stretch ahead of Evans, that will be important to him. He's just not getting the leg dry like normal. It's like we mentioned, you know, it's just that wheel of pain taking it out of them. As you can watch his dip there, his, his dip for that push press isn't near what it normally would be. And the, the amount of times you let's remember this is almost 440 pounds, 430 pounds it is exactly. Yeah. Every single time you have to clean that the energy that you're using up. But he got the important rep. Now he doesn't have to worry about coming back to the lighter log because that's going to be more energy expended for, for a number of these athletes. And Tom Stoltman steps away after one good rep. still have four men to go. Four very strong men as well. And able to push through that one rep. Looks like he was at that sticking point again, but fought through it. Tom Solman gets credit for it. We have a great crowd on hand here today, the opening day of the 2023 Arnold Strongman Classic, and a man who has won this event in the past, that is Hathor Bjornsson, who is coming out of retirement to compete again. And I know the fans are going to enjoy seeing him back. Awesome, and you guys are helping the guys lift these weights. You know, because of you guys, the guys are able to push to the limits. So thank you to you guys. You guys are the best. Thor, I got one question. We ever gonna see you back at the Arnold Strongman? That's a great question. So that's actually the button. So next year, I'm coming to take this title back. Let's go! Yeah! <laughs> you heard it, ladies and gentlemen! The Mountain! Well, Where that's gonna be fun time? to watch. Oh, next year is going to be exciting if Thor comes back. If Thor's Anthony back, Martins Novikov back. is back, Martins is healthy. Ooh, that'll be a battle. Uh, I'm excited for this year's contest, but that is going to be something to look forward to. Here comes Pablo Naganetsky, fourth place after event number one. And this guy's been exciting revelation over the last few years. An absolutely incredible deadlifter. If he has a weaker event, you know, it's been the log. Well, the overhead events in the competition has gone past. He's been working very hard at it. If he gets a rep with this, he has put himself in contention to battle for this contest. Oh, absolutely. We saw him at the Rogue Invitational struggle a little bit on the log, but that was a combo with the yoke. Yes. So just going at the log, we'll, we'll get a true take on where he's at on log press. You can see, like, the long arms. He's built for deadlifting, pressing. He's got so much further to press than some of the other athletes. Definitely much better levers for deadlift than log. But it's all clean. about making progress. And strong back. Rep, hugely strong legs. And look at that, it's going up, it's going up. He gets a good rep. And look at him. <laughs> it was pretty much a strict press. It was like a two-part. Yeah. <laughs> like a dip and that then a press. That was powerful. <laughs> and now can actually get warmed up for his, his no, second attempt. I'm not sure he really needed the dip. <laughs> you, the, you mentioned the rogue invitation. Last time we yeah. saw him, it was very clear technique was an issue with him. He oh. needed to clean that up. It looked like he has done that here. I, don't, I think he much. tidied up a lot more still. Yeah. But the power is clearly there. There's, there was just more power there. I mean. His timing is really off on that push press, but he's got so much shoulder power that he really strict pressed that up. What Jerry noticed then was that if you watch the way he presses, he dips and he drives with the leg, but then it's almost like he stops before then pressing with the shoulders and triceps. He's not able to get number two, but, but I'll we'll tell you tie what, for third right now. One rep, that's big points for him. This was an event a lot of people didn't expect him to score on and he's managed to get the big log. So still work to do on the technique, but like you said, clearly the power was there. I thought it looked a lot better than what we saw at Rogue. It was definitely better. He's making progress, no doubt about that. Now here's an opportunity, though, for guys like Mitchell and, and uh, Hooper that are coming out with these three guys sharing points. If they can get ahead of them, that's big. So let's yeah. watch the timing on this push press, see what you guys are talking about. You see the dip? 
And then there's actually, a strict press. As he dipped as well, he kind of let the log just roll ever so slightly down on his chest, but he has so much strength in reserve. There is still big progress to be made by that man, which is a scary thought for a lot of the other athletes. His technique when it comes to deadlifting, however, is faultless. You watch his deadlift form, it's perfect. It's just some of the other events need a little work. Let's bring in Kiki Dixon with Tom Stoltman. Tom, you were able to secure one rep, which means you can avoid the lighter weight. How satisfied are you with that rep? Yeah, very satisfied. I mean, my pressing power is not the best, but to hit a 195k log after a wheel of pain, uh, I'm very happy. I've done two fresh in training, so to do one here on that log, it's uh, hard. I mean, a lot of people have uh, only got a couple of reps, so yeah, I'm very happy. I don't have to do the lighter log now, so. So now you are done with day number one. You have three events ahead of you. What's the plan of attack to make your way to that podium? I'm just trying to concentrate on myself. You know, I've had a lot, lot of time off, and uh, I'm just trying to get back into the swing of things, back into the kind of, you know, my muscular endurance coming back up. But we've got max deadlift tomorrow, stone throw and frame, so anything can happen. On these max events, you have to be smart as well, so anything can happen there. And in the stone throw, no one's done that before, so who knows? So let's see what happens. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Mitch Hooper, the next man out. Coming in, riding a two-event win streak, one of the last two competitions in which he's entered. You were talking about Pavlo on the um, yoke into the log. Now, Mitch on the yoke into the log at the Rogue Invitation was unbelievable. Different event, mm -hmm. but when it came to log for, for speed and then moving with the yoke, he's unbelievable. Yeah, this is the first event. Ah. He's going to want to get at least two reps here, though, to challenge for this title. If he can get two, tie himself with Rob Kearney, it's going to put him in a very solid position because he'll stretch away from the athletes who've only managed one repetition. First attempt for Mitch Hooper at 430 pounds. He's been working hard on his pressing. And that good will go. First rep. Good strong rep. I like this, I like that he's taking his time. 90 seconds as we say, you know. Use it, use it to his advantage. Be clean. Ooh. Not able to get the second rep, but re-racks it. Let's see if he can fight through it, and he will That's get impressive. it! Wow. Great recovery to, from Mitch Hooper. Yeah, to be able to bring that back down to the chest, stabilize himself and then go again that takes a lot of effort and a lot of energy still plenty of time here 30 seconds once he hits the one minute mark is what he will have left he needs one rep to tie thompson for first he can probably give himself till about 115 and then he'll have to go he's watching that clock he's he knows timing he perfectly he's a smart athlete there we go. He need, knows he needs to go now. And in 15 seconds, he gets his hands on it. This for the tie. That's too much. He's close. Can he get it? Can he get it? He and Mitch does. got it. He gets it. At the last second, Mitch Hooper with his third rep will tie Bobby Thompson for first place. Wow. He was just keeping us all guessing. Mitch Hooper managing to get three repetitions just inside the time limit. What a methodical performance from Mitch Hooper. He said 115, <laughs> and at 115, he had his hands on that log. But even I thought he'd left it too late after missing the first attempt. He was pushing it close. He was yeah. pushing it close. <laughs> He's just kind of building the drama. Yeah. <laughs> One more look at uh, Mitch Hooper, who failed to press on his first attempt and then was able to get it. The second one was good, and then the third, he just sneaks it in inside that 90-second cap. So interesting watching his technique. He's got this ability to really bend backwards and almost get into like an incline press position. Yeah, he really like pushes away from the log and catches it and then finishes pressing yeah. it out. That attempt there, the log just rolled forward a bit, but then he manages to get himself into a better rack position and he just squeezed that out in time. Another big reaction. The 
Three reps, still the best score that we have seen. Jerry, you said it would take four to win. And we will see if Mateusz Kieliszkowski can get that mark. Trey Mitchell is also going to make a run it. here. This could well be the man to do it. He's not got as big a log as some of the athletes for, for one rep. But what Trey is very good at is turning up at his best at competition. He's, you know, we've seen Bobby make a mistake. Bobby should have hit four. He had four. He's got to hold his hands he up and make a mistake. Yep. Trey has been very good at getting everything right in competition. Yep. And the energy of this crowd right now, it just keeps getting better and better. The last time we saw Trey compete in person, uh, we did, was at the Rogue Invitational when he took second. And I think that was sort of felt like a coming out party for him. Like he is here, he has arrived, he deserves to be on the big stage. I, I spoke to Trey and he believes he should have won that competition. Yeah. Well, he believes in his abilities. He knows he's one of the strongest men on the planet. He knows where he's strong, he knows where he's weaker. Yeah. He's addressing those weaknesses. And he knows he can set himself up really well going in tomorrow. So maybe slight mistake there where the whistle started and we're 10 seconds in and he's not attempted a rep yet, but first rep up for Trey. Oh, that press. looked good. Press. But as you mentioned, started a little late. We'll see if those 10 seconds are... will come back to bite him yeah. at the end. Second attempt now for Trey. That will count. Strong. Two great presses so far. Very strong. How many more does he have left in him? See how this third one moves. Yes. And that will good. tie for We've first. Got some big power from the legs on that rep. And he right, still right. has 30 seconds to go here. I think we could see our first athlete hit four. He's got the time. Take Maybe. a little time, take a little time. Calm down. Hit it like that last one. Plenty of leg power. No need to rush now. He knows he just needs one more rep. Get that clean, don't waste anything. This for the win. Big drive. For Trey Mitchell. Yeah. And he is in the lead. First place with four reps, with one man remaining. And what a day one so far for Trey Mitchell. He knows that's huge for him. Big, big point. After a second and then maybe a potential log win here. Well, everyone was talking about Bobby and Luke on the log. We all know how good Trey is, but on paper, when you look at results, you kind of say, okay, yeah. maybe Trey's the third biggest log presser. Yep. To be ahead of those two is massive. Yeah, well, we've seen board. Mateos have some really great performances on the log. He was a little disappointed with his performance on the Wheel of Pain. This will be a very good test for the Polish Terminator. But Trey Mitchell was so consistent throughout this entire event and timed it perfectly. He did, yeah. He messed up a little bit at the start. He, he kind of didn't have his straps on. But luckily, with the time limit, he was fine. But Trey Mitchell gets four. Mitch Hooper got three, and he is with Kiki Dixon. Mitch, the crowd is electric out there today. How much do you feed off that energy? Look, it's really good when it's something like max deadlift, but when it's something like log for reps, it's so easy to feel like you gotta go right away. So it's almost, you almost gotta keep your emotion in check, watch the clock and tune them out in an acute sense, and then go back and feed off that when you're actually going to press it. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's awesome to play with it a bit. When you have a minute and a half, it's so long to be able to hang out, enjoy, soak it up a little bit. So you never know when you're going to be back. You never know when you're going to get hurt. So I'm just trying to enjoy myself as much as possible. Thank you so much. Thanks, Kaz. Uh, one man remains. It's Mateusz Kieliszkowski, the winner of event number one. And he will have to get five reps if he wants to win this event outright. I think Mitch Hooper was um, confusing the lovely Kiki for Kaz there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kaz. <laughs> I can promise you they look very, very different. Oh. So what can Mateusz Kieliszkowski do on the log? Great start on event number one, but Trey Mitchell 
has hit an extremely impressive four reps on the log. And you saw the pace that it took Mitchell to get four. And he started 10 seconds late. So there no room for error here for Kieliszkowski. He's kind of doing the same thing, though. He's not attacking it right away. Taking his time. Nearly 15 seconds elapsed before he starts his first Being attempt. Very methodical. One is good. Yep. Okay. He's got an important one rep. Two will be good for him. Yeah. We've seen him do two before. He's clearly not rushing. So I don't think the tactic here is to beat Trey Mitchell. No, definitely not in, a, in the pace for four. But if he can get two, possibly a third one. If he, I think maybe two is probably looking like to be the mark. And yeah. Trey Mitchell now looks like he could be your overall leader after day one. As Mateos is not able to get that second rep. That tricep's just not quite like it used to be. And yep. see him moving there. He's had a torn lat in the past as well. I think he's only about eight months out from the surgery on the lat. Well, all that comes into play when, <laughs> when you're pulling, as long as you're pulling that 430 in the lap. Yes. Yeah, it's not there. I can imagine muscles you didn't even know have hurting when you're trying to pull that thing <laughs> off the ground. It's a strain on the whole body. I mean, not only the upper body holding on to it, but the knees as you start to you know, you know lean, go forward and roll it back and... I'll tell you what, you can see the physical kind of and mental disappointment on his face there. He's not happy with that. And it's so hard, as Jerry mentioned, you know, when you're coming back from these injuries, half of it is a mental battle. The body's recovered sometimes, but the mental scars are still there. It's in the back of your mind every time you approach those bigger numbers and those bigger weights. You can be fine with the lighter stuff, that confidence builds. But when you get back to competition and it's time to go against the best in the world, there's this little voice knocking especially the, hard. that big big heavy stuff those injuries start come back to haunt you but now he's put himself he's got the one rep but he's tying splitting points with three other guys yes which is going to hurt his overall a little day, bit day one for me it's it's gone perfect for trey mitchell and for mitch hooper yeah. those two guys are probably where they want to be right now perfect the mateusz kiliskowski with one good rep let's bring in kiki dixon trey Four solid lifts. How excited are you being, Are you to end day two, or excuse me, day number one with four reps for this event? Oh, it's amazing to be able to lift. I don't think it's happened since uh, Big Z, the lifting four reps on the Austrian Oak, and it's it fills me with pride to be able to, uh, all the hard work to pay off. Were you expecting four reps? What were your expectations for this particular event? Uh, Coming into today, I was planning on two to three reps, but all the other guys you know, showed out, so it was like I got to uh, up my game too. So, you know, Bobby and Bobby and who else was it? Uh, Pablo, that got three reps. Mitch Hooper. Mitch Hooper. Mitch Hooper. Sorry, uh, Mitch Hooper and Bobby got three reps, and it's like I got to show out, got get four reps. Well, you certainly showed up. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> Trey Mitchell looking like he's going to be the overall leader after day number one. He finished second in the Wheel of Pain. He's going to win the Austrian Oak. He should have 19 points with three events remaining. And now we've got a battle at 385. Battle for ninth now. And Kevin Ferris is going to be the first man out once we get everything situated. We started with the 430-pound Austrian Oak. If you were unable to complete a lift there, you drop down to 385, and that's where we are now. It just shows the standard of our men. Only two athletes are now attempting this lighter look. Well, that four reps by Trey. Oh, that unbelievable. This is only the second of five events that we will face. You got three tomorrow. So as you now go home and try to figure out how you recover, what are you thinking about as far as setting yourself up for success on Sunday, or Saturday, pardon me? I think for different athletes, it's going to be different positions. For, for me, Trey and, and Mitch have come out perfectly. They have had a perfect day one. Trey Mitchell, first place and a second place. He's going to be over the moon. He has won 
potentially weaker event when it comes to the, the, the frame carry. So he knows he needs to be in the lead going into that. For Mitch Hooper, it's all about consistency, not dropping points, and he's done that well today as well with three solid events to come tomorrow. Other athletes, it's kind of been all over the place, so they need to kind of reass reassess, go home, get some food in, get a good night's sleep, and just treat the competition as a fresh day tomorrow. Event number one is a new day, and you still got to fight for every single point. We never know what's going to happen. And we'll kick things up off on Saturday with the elephant bar deadlift, then the stone throw, and then we're going to close with the timber carry. The interesting 30 points on the line tomorrow. Yeah, the interesting event for tomorrow is going to be that stone throw. It's so new to all the athletes, so there's no, you know, we don't have the information to go off from previous competitions. And I think that kind of element of surprise, you know, the, the, they won't have the confidence. They all know when they're good log lifters. They all know when they're good deadlifters. But that is an event that anything could happen on. Yeah, we can we make assumptions that, you know, like the taller guys like Tom Stolman and Mateus, you know, might do well. But a, a guy like Trey or Bobby, they got a lot of shoulder power, might be able to launch it very well, too. So we, we really don't know. We, you know, we can just all we can do is make some guesses. Yeah. Well, here comes Kevin Ferris. who will be the first man on the 385 pound log, making his first appearance here at the Arnold Strongman Classic. He and Luke Stoltman will be the two men who will be fighting for ninth place here. I think Luke Stoltman is going to be the most disappointed athlete after today. Absolutely. Oh, he's, he, he wasn't bad on the, the Wheel of Pain, but the log should have been a banker he, for him. He was a clear favorite to come in. We thought he was going to win it. And you can see the scoring in the upper right-hand part of your screen. One rep on the light log, only worth 10 points. Thomas Evans there. Fantastic on that log. Even Pablo set, him up, set himself up pretty well because he potentially could win deadlift tomorrow. Yeah. So going in the stone throw, he could be overall doing pretty well. Yeah, I don't think Pablo's going to be disappointed at all with his day one. No. His better events are to come tomorrow. As you can tell, Kevin's fatigued. Normally 385 would be a very easy rep for Kevin. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. The wheel of pain takes it out of the legs. He's already attempted the, the 430 log. And he stepped into this competition last minute as well. Yeah, he's really prepped for this. Been training for Will Strong's man. It's about a month out, a month and a half out. Really not at his peak yet. I think he's going to leave it there. I think at this point, is chalk it up and start resting for tomorrow. He's a good deadlifter. Exceptional grip on him. I'm looking forward to watching him on the frame. He'll be great on frame. I mean, he's got, you know, we know two good events tomorrow at Stonewall, so we don't know how it's going to turn, but he could gain some points on the guys of like Kulokoski and, and, and Luke Stoneman that we know are, you know, exceptional deadlifters. Final attempt for Ferris at 385. He does have one good rep so far and not going to be able to get to. Like Jerry said, normally fresh, we'd expect to see a lot more reps from Kevin, but the athletes are feeling it after a tiring first day. Even though it's only two events, it's been a long day. Long day. Drained. And, like, and he said, you know, just a minute ago, he, he had a couple goes at the 430. It takes a lot out of you just cleaning that thing, you know. Because I think normally at 335, he comes out and hits three, four reps. Kevin Ferris with one rep at the 385-pound log, and we have one athlete remaining. See Luke come out, hit two reps, and you're ready to fuel up for tomorrow. Yeah, I think Luke's going to be happy that it's just two reps that he needs. Yeah, he doesn't have to really push himself too hard now, and you know. And normally, you'd expect him to, to make this look like a warm-up. Oh, yeah, and he would. Well, Luke Stoltman will try to take ninth place if he can get I think we two reps. Two, two reps, and then he'll walk away. Yeah. Save it for tomorrow. 
Coming tomorrow fresh, ready to attack the deadlift, get as many points as you can, because I believe Stone could be a good event for him. You can tell by that look that he nowhere had any plans of coming out and doing this light log <laughs> when this day started. Yeah. Oh, no. It's, it, it doesn't always go to plan, does it? Jim? No, not at all. I've had, I've had many, many shows. I know you have, too, that you threw the, the plan out the I've, window. I've after been in shows where my best event has gone terrible, and then a bad event has gone well. Yeah. You just don't know. You've got to focus on one at a time. Or was it Mike Tyson who said everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face? <laughs> I think that wheel of pain is one giant punch in the face. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Luke Stolman needs two reps to beat Kevin Ferris and finish ninth in this event. First rep is good. You can see he's even struggling with that a little bit towards the lockout. He's not himself. There is something clearly up with Luke. Yeah, now, there is, he does not need to rush this. No, no, not at all. He just makes sure he gets this next one, a certain ninth. But you get to tell, like Laura, Laura just said, he, he is not 100% right now. And that Next will do it like for Luke Solman. He'll take ninth place. He needs to go and get some food in him, chill and out. And now and he's, the crowd's like, come on, do one more. And here's where the crowd comes into play, and, and you do things you shouldn't do. Yeah, this is like, you know, the crowd love Luke because he'll play up to the crowd, and, yeah. you know, and now he's kind of getting into it. But I think he just needs to get back to the hotel, get, get some food, hotel, in, get yeah. some rest. Exactly. There's still three events to fight for. This doesn't pay anything right now. No. This is all wasted energy now. But, <laughs> but he's a showman. He's happy and he's, he's a, a showman. showman. And the crowd are responding. <laughs> Why not? Do another one. And that's five for Luke Stoltman. You know what? He's getting better with each rep. Yeah. <laughs> the way the first rep looked, I thought, yeah. we just get two to be lucky, I think. Well, yeah. the crowd can often cheer you into doing something you didn't think you could do, and they can often cheer you into something you probably shouldn't do. And uh, Magnus just told him, what's the matter with you? Why don't you sit down after two? And I thought he was thinking, if I get 10, I can equal Mateus. Yeah. <laughs> so Luke Stoltman, six reps there with the light log, which and is still 175 kilos. He knows, yeah. able to have a good laugh about it, but he only needed two. He gets six. Yeah. <laughs> And I can tell you, there's many, many strong men watching thinking, I wish I could do that. Oh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he clearly wasn't himself on the heavy log, but putting on a show for the crowd. But Luke, Luke needs to get back to the hotel, sort himself out. There's still events to fight for tomorrow. The competition is not over for him. Trey Mitchell is going to pick up the win. He goes second in the Wheel of Pain, first in the Austrian Oak. He'll have 19 points and looks to be your overall leader heading into day number two. Mitchell Hooper, he is in great position after two events. Bobby Thompson will finish in second, followed by Rob Kearney and the Mateusz Kieliszkowski. But it is Trey Mitchell, four good reps to take the win. The interesting thing watching Trey there was that his third rep was probably the best rep. Yeah. Kind of rushed himself a little bit on that first. But he just settled in really solid, knew what he needed to do, and I love that he just raised his level on the day that counts. Four reps, an event win, and 10 points for Trey Mitchell, who is with Kiki Dixon. Trey, you are the overall leader at the close of day number one. 
what are you going to do to navigate day number two to maintain that lead and end on top of the podium? I uh, plan on at least making second place in the deadlift uh, tomorrow, the elephant bar deadlift. And the toss, it's a toss up with that Usman stone throw, but uh, I've been training it hard and it's been going well. And the frame is the only one I'm worried about, but uh, my, I'm making progress in my grip, but it's the only weak flaw in my uh, plan tomorrow. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Big Tex on top of the overall leaderboard after two events, 19 total points. Mitch Hooper sits two up on Mateusz Kierlowskowski. Pablo Nakanechny sits in fourth, and it's Tom Stoltman in fifth. So as we close out day number one of competition here, we'll start with you, Laws. What was the biggest surprise for you here today? Um, I think for me, potentially Victoria Long's performance in the, in the women's, in the men, Luke Stoltman taking uh, a low position for him on yeah. what we would have expected to be big, big points. Jerry, what about you? Uh, Re Rebecca Roberts coming out crushing that wheel of pain, you know, coming in as, as an alternate. Um, and then Luke missing that log. I mean, that, that was, nobody would have thought that, you know. But it just shows how punishing that wheel of pain is. Well, we have a big day of competition tomorrow where we will crown a new champion for the men. Three events remain here. We're going to step aside, take a quick break, but keep it right here. We're going to wrap everything up on the Rogue Iron Game. Stay with us, everybody, as our coverage continues from Columbus, Ohio.